Hi there. How can we become a more attractive character? There's a question there that's quite uh, significant in business to business relationship development and marketing for senior professional people. Um, the, the phrase, the attractive character has a significant meaning to it. Essentially, the, the more that we can attract people to us, the less we need to go chasing after them. And the more attractive we are, the more likely we are to develop a following of people and to keep them engaged. So what I'm going to cover here in this Rainmaker briefing is distilling and translating some learning there from a guy called Russell Brunson, who came out, uh, wrote some books on the expert secrets and dot com secrets. So uh, I'll give some positioning for him and then run through half a dozen techniques that I believe are relevant to senior business to business professionals and uh, with some suggestions there as to how you might want to apply those. So the, the essence for, uh, for Russell Brunson, he's uh, been a very successful internet marketer and developed an incredible following online. Uh, he's the um, creator of ClickFunnels. Now his message in fairness is aimed at the internet marketing crowd where it's very much around following the individual uh, at the head of the organization. And there are some business to business organizations where there is that uh, sort of charismatic leader. Um, and the essence of what Russell is talking about there is that uh, the people who, he who follow him will be projecting what their audience would like to become. And they're doing that in a way of saying, I was like you a while ago, I understand where you are on your issues. Um, I have now become like this. And if you follow me and my teachings, you also can become like I am. And there's a sort of, the, that's very much in the, the, the coaching and the marketing and the uh, uh, personal development front, personal development area. But taking those techniques and, and re-spinning them and re-sequencing them, the six techniques I pick out there for the business to business market. They start off with uh, don't be boring. And I would associate that with don't be invisible either. So be prepared to be visible is a first case there. We need to raise our profile. It's no longer the case that we have a sort of monopoly in our local geographic marketplace. And there's a limited uh, number of options that our clients could go to. And therefore, we're going to get a percentage share of that. The world through the Internet has become a global marketplace. And there are people who are taking market share from those uh, who are uh, not you know, marketing themselves strongly in this uh, in this marketplace. So in terms of not being boring, I would put that into two dimensions. Uh, along the uh, the horizontal the is about the message what is our message so a mainstream message that one that everybody else is talking about is not going to get much traction a really wacky message is going to probably be too extreme for the uh, business to business marketplace and credibility might suffer there in between there is uh, to use a, a phrase from from Russell's that being prolific both prolific in terms particularly of creative ideas, so being creative about how we're tackling particular topics, uh, particularly in the business to business marketplace, how perhaps we could help to reframe a topic for our audience, get them to think differently about something. Uh, there's, a, there's a different angle to aim for that sort of aha moment and uh, find a way of putting that across that is it's different to mainstream but it's not totally wacky and therefore it does create a bit of a bit of a standout for us um, and the the second is on the vertical axis is to deliver it in a style that is not uh, dull so um, looking there at different formats different styles um, if you can do humor then fantastic if you can tell stories fantastic uh, different ways of uh, raising and presenting our message 
in a way that is not uh, not mainstream. So there's something distinctly different about it. And by doing that, a combination of um, a message that gets some um, some interrupts and pattern interrupts uh, on us, and maybe some outreach that pulls people to us, gets us them onto their onto our video sessions, for example, keeps them reading our newsletter. There's there's something new in there. They're going to gain. They're going to learn. They're going to get some value from uh, consuming our content. So that's the part first part there about um, uh, being interesting, not being boring. Uh, not being invisible. The second part is, second step is to identify a suitable role for ourselves. Um, the ones that Russell identifies are, there's four of those. One is leader, so it might be that we are leading a group of people, um, uh, a membership group or whatever, uh, leading them into an area that uh, we're familiar with but they may not be familiar with. The second uh, role might be the adventurer or the crusader, someone who, who is now or has been leading from the front into new territory. Uh, and, and there's a category there at the moment called a leading learner. So somebody who is learning as they go and is willing to share that learning with, uh, with people who are close to them. Not everything is tried and proven, but there's a lot of uh, rapid experimentation going on there. There's a bit of what I'm doing here, which is that sort of leader learn, leading learner role. Then another is the, the reporter or the journalist who is curating content from different sources and then making it relevant to the, their particular audience. So in a sense, I'm doing a bit of that here. I'm uh, learn, learning from others, Russell Brunson being one of those, uh, reporting that and putting a particular translation on it to the, the senior professional B2B marketplace, people in there. And another role, uh, fourth, is the reluctant hero for people who didn't volunteer or didn't sort of uh, put themselves forward for a particular leadership role, but due to circumstances, they were the one who was most equipped to step up and, and, and take over. And that could happen in you know, personal life or you know, incidents and so on, but also in a business sense, it might be that you were the uh, the most obvious candidate to succeed the, you know, the the senior person perhaps in a family business who moved on so that may be the reluctant leader role there and then within those four roles there are ways that we can build the content around for that so the elements that go into that are the backstory so the sort of a, my story marketing where where people came from, their journey, particularly the transformations that uh, they went through to, to get to where they are now. So my backstory is that uh, I was uh, um, moved from, from school into uh, a bank years ago, then went to do a marketing degree and that was a significant positive choice. Um, then managed to get myself a job in IBM as a systems engineer, had 10 years sort of commercial apprenticeship and technical apprenticeship there, very much at the, the, the leading lights of, um, of the technology revolution through the 1980s and 1990s. You can find out other parts of my backstory uh, through my website and the like, but that's part of it. Being able to talk in parallels, uh, sorry, parables, so illustrative stories in a neat short format not a lengthy sort of fireside chat, but uh, with you know two or three points to a story, the introduction, the gaining of interest, what's the meeting, what's the conclusion. So being able to do that and have a number of those stories up our sleeves from different, uh, different parts of our careers and working that out so we have a, a menu of those that we've developed and we can drop in. It may be applicable to identify some character flaws, so identify that we are not you know, we're not perfect, we are authentic, we make mistakes, we apologize, we make wrong decisions and so on. So be prepared to acknowledge the, um, that not everything that we work on is gonna be a, a rip roaring success, but to acknowledge that uh, everything is a learning opportunity and be able to highlight those, those learnings. And then the fourth part here is about the polarity. We're not gonna be able to please everybody all the time, and actually that's quite a good way of being distinctive to some people in a positive way may actually repel other people. 
but it may be that we wouldn't want necessarily want those as our clients and they wouldn't necessarily want to work with us so uh, we, we attract certain people because of uh, who we are that's not necessarily right that we fit for everybody so there's some pieces there about the backstory and uh, some things one thing that would tend to roll that all together if it's a if you can see that in your own history is what they call the the format of the hero's journey so um that sort of comes out of some of the um uh the storybook style and there were you know different chapters that would go through something like a, a mills and boone story for example but in a business context it is you know painting the scene then what was the challenge and how the hero stepped up to that um, how they overcame the challenge and also how they were transformed as a result of that so the the experience made them a different and ideally a better person as a result of that so i'm working with uh, some clients to to help them to construct those stories because it's applicable they went through uh experiences maybe 10 15 years previous in their career and that was a pivotal moment for their for their career development which is now given them a strong purpose as to why they're doing what they're doing now and that will mean that certain of their target audience can relate very strongly to that situation and that, that they also can relate to their client situations they they have walked in their shoes as it were they felt the emotional journey all of the the fear and uncertainty the trepidation and they've come through it and because they've come through it they're able to now um, show empathy to, to, to the person they're talking to and also lead from a position of experience not just from a position of theory so from that point of view my own my own journey to becoming a, a self-employed consultant has been through that sort of pivotal stage 10 years ago when I stepped out from from corporate uh, uh, employed uh, career uh, into doing my own thing and the experience I've had ever since which has been uh, uh, interesting and very educational so uh, that's the second part. Uh, the third is to understand how to use persuasion. So there are different ways of relating to an audience uh, that is persuasive. And if that's not a familiar territory to you, then I'll just highlight the, the, the five very briefly for, for time. The first of which is to encourage the dreams of your your target audience so what do they aspire to do they aspire to gain promotion do they aspire to uh, to uh, make a lot of money do they aspire to move out and, and gain more freedom by setting up their own business for, for example to justify their failures so to acknowledge that there are reasons why they may be where they are that aren't just down to something they've done personally wrong it may be the state of the marketplace it may be the company that they're working for all sorts of reasons like that might be a reason why they're in the current situation um and yeah to lay concerns and, and it's not their fault because the the table is stacked against them to lay their fears if uh, they're looking at making a, a step into the unknown taking on a bigger project for example going for a, a promotion and a, and a bigger role uh, stepping out from employed into self-employed those are times where that people may be quite fearful and to allay those fears is, is a good way of helping them to, 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 to make that step forward. Uh, next may be to confirm their suspicions. Uh, there may be some things that, uh, that, that the niggling away there and those suspicions could come through as, as objections if it's, a, if it's a sales situation and therefore to Put those on the table to bring those out early on maybe an advantage to um to, to some way preempt them and, and and outweigh them for example and the uh, the fifth uh, within this persuasion um is the phrase to, to throw rocks at the enemies and uh, the number of different interpretations of that um for some people interpret it as throwing rocks at the competitors I'd advise against that. It's not particularly uh, a smart move to be uh, uh, showing you know, disrespect of the competitors, but it, there may be subtle ways of trying to raise the importance of certain factors that you know are in your favour and not in your competitors' favour. But the other may be that there's a bigger 
you know, elephant in the room, as it were, or gorilla there. It may be to do with the, uh, the state of an industry or a market. It may be to do with the government or taxation or legislation or something like that. That is, that is the, quote, enemy. And you become the, the champion for your particular uh, target audience because you're fighting the enemy on their behalf through some sort of lobbying or campaigning or helping them to um, mitigate the effects of the impact of that, uh, of that enemy. So the number of techniques around there, how to use persuasion. Um, the, the, the fourth area is to maintain absolute certainty. Uh, the key there is it's, it's beyond self-confidence and the ability to go into a situation and, and, and present something confidently, but it's also much more around the, the ongoing certainty of purpose, of position, and despite difficulties, to, to, main, to me remain solid to that. So for me, that alignment with purpose of uh, helping ambitious senior professionals to be more successful uh, keeps me going through, uh, through the ups and downs of, of being self-employed. So maintaining that, uh, that, that, that uh, message, that self-confidence and purpose. And one of the ways that we can do that is by regularly repeating the same activity. So a couple of examples there. One might be to regularly be writing blog articles and posts on LinkedIn that strengthen our position, engage with our audience and so on. And maybe to do a challenge there, maybe to for a month or you know, 20 or 30 days in a month to, to write an article and post it on LinkedIn to get into a habit of thinking about a topic and developing it. So um, six months ago, uh, when I started the Rainmaker briefings, it was a little bit of uh, into the unknown, but it's developed over those six months doing these three times a week. The repetition there has really strengthened my, uh, my, my, my message and my delivery, my confidence. So do the repetition. Um, it may also be that uh, doing uh, cold calling is necessary or making some sort of outreach and committing to do that maybe uh, 10 calls a day for a period, uh, just to practice picking up the phone, dialing the number, talking to the person at the other end. The first few calls are gonna feel a bit awkward, but within uh, a short period of time, maybe those 10 calls, maybe an hour or so, it will be far less intimidating than you thought it was to start with. And it also builds up the confidence in the in the words that you use, the points that you raise, that will improve as well. And thereafter, doing that on a, on a regular basis, doing a batch of calls or a batch of messages and so on, uh, it becomes quite a productive activity. Um, the, the next point then is to show that we care. Show that we care for our audience a lot. Uh, and that comes as part of the message from the trusted advisor the trust equation there where we are showing you know, that we're very uh, consistent um, we've got empathy and also we're other oriented so we care more about success of the other person um, perhaps than we do for our own success we're certainly not revealing that the only, the only reason we're why we're doing something is, is for what we can gain out of it because people will see through that very quickly so show that we care um, and part of that is, is being there for people when they go through rough times. Um, we can also show that by being thinking about ourselves. Are we prepared to do what we do, even if we weren't going to get paid for it? Do we feel that, that strongly for it? And if so, that would see us through some of the lean times. Um, but by being paid for it and charging for our services, that is also helping others to make far more progress with what we're teaching because people who get something for free will tend not to value it particularly highly and they may well then not take action and, and do their homework as it were the follow through whereas if they're paying more they're more likely to do the action and I know from personal experience where I've invested in consultancy and training and support services I've paid a lot more attention to those that I've been paying for than for those where I've uh, got them on a, on a free basis or on a sort of reciprocal uh, trade. And then 
moving on as the business matures to be charging more and more for our services is a way of showing that we really care for those who have a rubber bed to put a very high value against it and that we can raise our standard, raise the value, raise the delivery in, 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 in a recognition of that additional, um, additional money. So that's a guidance there for charging um, a, you know, for, to, to feed into the, the, the pricing that we, uh, we, we apply. And the final area, the sixth, is to offer value through the relationship that we have with people. So this isn't just showing giving value through the chargeable services, but it's giving value through the, the pre-sales, the nurture, as it were, from the uh, early contact through, uh, through the opportunity and beyond, and then beyond um, a, a client engagement to keep delivering value, particularly through email, through the, the phone calls and so on, and have a system in place to, uh, to keep in touch with people to be uh, seeing what they're posting on LinkedIn and like and comment into that on a periodic basis, uh, to be putting more suggestions and ideas to them, potentially to the point where a little and often and keep, uh, keep dropping those seeds there. Uh, some of them may fall on stony ground, but until somebody has chosen to unsubscribe and says enough is enough, then we still have permission to continue to drop those and the timing may just not be right for somebody to, uh, to to take action but we're still in front of them so that when they uh, when the timing or the circumstances do occur or perhaps when they meet somebody uh, who has a, a need that they think well actually uh, they keep hearing from Mark and therefore provide a referral or an introduction to that person so we can get a benefit from that by keeping in touch with people. So hopefully uh, the combination of those six techniques there to, to help us to become a more attractive character so that people choose to follow us, they choose to consume our content, they choose to keep getting value from us on a regular basis, uh, will help you to develop your, uh, your followers, your, your crowd and maintain your visibility in the marketplace. So uh, hope that's been useful to you. If you have any questions or comments, please uh, drop me a line on uh, a message on LinkedIn. Uh, if you want to chat it through, then uh, book a, a call with me on the, uh, the diary, which you can get to through uh, the URL, which is markstonham.com. Takes you to my online diary page. I'm very happy to have a discovery uh, or exploratory call with you. And uh, I hope it's been useful. And uh, let me know how you get on. And uh, look forward to being you and e look forward to you being an even more attractive character over the next few weeks and months. Thank you very much for your time. Bye for now.